Hey, just a quick disclaimer before we start the video. I want to remind you that when I post videos on natural ingredients or on natural hair care techniques, it doesn't mean you have to drop what you're doing and change up your regimen. If your current hair care regimen is working, meaning it keeps your scalp clean and your hair moisturized and lubricated, there's no need to drastically fix something that's not broken. The style of these videos are factual, based off of proven research, and to the point. So treat them as a reference for when you're looking to try something new, or just to stock up on knowledge. I don't want you to feel like you have to change things up. Because in reality, everything edible that grows out the ground is a potentially great hair product. So please don't let all this information make you feel overwhelmed. Okay, back to the video. So far, I've talked about the scientifically proven benefits of Amla and Shikai Kai and went over tips on different ways to use them on your hair. You can find links to both videos in the description section below. In this video, let's take a closer look at Brahmi. If Shikai Kai is considered a shampoo and Amla a conditioner, I would categorize Brahmi as a scalp treatment. Don't get me wrong, all these natural herbs are multifunctional. They all provide different benefits to your scalp and hair, as well as conditioning, strengthening, and cleansing benefits, and are packed with a ridiculous amount of nutrients and minerals. But they also have different active ingredients and chemical personalities. And if some overlap, they often have different amounts. For example, both Shikai Kai and Brahmi have a chemical called saponin, which you know from the Shikai Kai video is a cleansing agent. But Shikai Kai has a lot more saponin than Brahmi, hence why I categorize Shikai Kai as a shampoo and not Brahmi. So I prefer to focus more on their main proven active benefits. Like most plants, Brahmi has different names based on what part of the world you're in. I found about 60 different names from around the world. It grows wild in almost every tropical location on Earth. Its scientific name is Centella asiatica. FYI, there's another plant called Bacopa that has almost identical properties as Brahmi. In fact, it's often called Brahmi, but it's not. They're two different plants. Brahmi is a low to the ground, creepy vine-like perennial with long tangled stems and smooth fan-shaped leaves. It's actually a member of the parsley family. See the similarities? It grows wild in hot, humid, tropical climates around the world and loves water. It's an invasive, fast-growing plant that can easily produce pounds and pounds of green leaves if the conditions are right. As with most plants, Brahmi has tons of beneficial chemicals, but the two that interest me the most are its tritorpanoids and alkaloids content. Here's a simple explanation of how triterpenoids work. They act as an antioxidant on your scalp and stimulate connective tissue and collagen formation in your scalp. So it heals cuts and wounds faster and strengthens your hair follicles. With long-term use, triterpenoids keep your hair follicles strong, tight, and resistant to premature and excessive hair loss. The healthier and stronger your scalp is, the more new hair follicle formation can be supported. Brahmi also contains a good amount of alkaloids. The alkaloid content in Brahmi is a great hair growth aid because it binds to the protein produced in your hair follicles. So the hair that grows out is thicker and stronger. To experience Brahmi's full benefits, it's really important to massage it into your scalp really good and use it consistently. Alkaloids also have sedative abilities. In fact, an example of a strong alkaloid is morphine. Brahmi isn't nearly as strong as morphine, but it can also be used to calm the mind and help you sleep. And you don't have to consume it to experience this either. Massaging an infused oil directly on your scalp is enough to promote better sleep quality. Brahmi's active ingredients are oil soluble and a water mixture doesn't cling to your hair well. 
so it's best to infuse Brahmi in oil. You can either soak the powder or dried herb in an organic oil of your choice without heat. Let it sit for about a week and sift out the Brahmi. And you're left with Brahmi oil. But if you're short of time, you can use a double boiler to infuse the oil with the simmer method on low for an hour to an hour and a half. Let it cool and sift out the Brahmi. Either way, you're left with a potent Brahmi oil. Since I consider it more of a scalp treatment, I suggest you either use a little at a time as a leave-in to aid in scooping and spreading, or as a rinse out hot oil treatment. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's important to focus on your scalp and take some time to massage it in. If you're in a mood, this is a good time to also invert your head. You can also coat your hair strands with it as well, but I chose to use it on my scalp as a scalp treatment and do a real protein treatment on my hair strands because I was due for one. Everyone's hair needs are unique, so as long as you're focusing the Brahmi infused oil on your scalp, you're free to be as creative as you want, and you can use it as often as you want as well. The full effect of Brahmi is noticed more with long-term use, but after one use, my scalp felt well lubricated. Just so you know, a good way to check the health of your scalp is to press down on it. You wanna make sure that the skin on your scalp is tight, and that there's little to no fat in between your skin and your skull. You also want to check for any new soft spots, soreness, or discoloration. So make sure to take some time to check and observe your scalp from time to time. I know I do. One last thing. Due to all its collagen reparative benefits, Brahmi infused oil is also really good to use as an oil cleanser. It helps keep acne at bay and with consistent long-term use, it also helps with hyperpigmentation issues. I like to describe organic foods and ingredients as being alive because they're very complex and offer more benefits to your hair, skin, and body than science can fully understand for now. I tried to give you as much insight into the personality of Brahmi in this video, but as with anything, you'll never truly know how it's going to affect you until you try it out for yourself. So that's it for the Ayurvedic series for now. I plan on covering more plants like hibiscus, methi, neem, and fenugreek in the near future. So please stay tuned. I hope you liked the video. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.